Welcome to my talk about Apache Kafka as a monitoring data pipeline. My name is Jakub Scholz and I work as a software engineer at Red Hat and uh, I'm one of the maintainers of a CNCF project called Strumzy, which uh, focuses on running Apache Kafka on uh, Kubernetes. And I'm also a contributor of Apache Kafka itself. Uh, maybe on the beginning we can try to quickly define what kind of monitoring uh, I will be looking at here. Uh, if you Google it, you will find many different uh, definitions. Trust me, I tried it on the beginning <laughs> when writing the slides. Uh, but so in this talk, I will mostly focus on uh, collecting, analyzing, and uh, using all the different informations which we can get uh, from a system and which help us to understand the system. That uh, typically includes uh, logs, metrics, traces, uh, and so on. And uh, these data have different use cases uh, when they are important. Uh, for example, we usually need to understand the current state of the system to uh, know whether it's running okay, whether it has some problems, uh, whether we need to do something and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, it's also useful later, for example, to analyze uh, past issues and problems or maybe to analyze, uh, uh, for example, possible future improvements in performance or in some functionality and uh, things like that. And usually there is some monitoring pipeline which is used to collect these data, uh, usually through some collector or agent running uh, inside the application or on the same server as the application, which gets the data. And then there's usually some parsing to kind of parse the data because they have different formats. Uh, and uh, you might need to normalize these and then you uh, usually filter out which of these really matter and which are useless. And then you usually route them to some other application where uh, yeah, maybe you just want to view the data, uh, maybe you want to analyze these data a bit deeper, maybe you just want to store them for later or do some kind of processing uh, of them. And uh, one of the most known examples uh, is uh, the so-called uh, EFK stack, uh, Elasticsearch FluentD Kibana, which uh, is used for collecting logging data. Sometimes uh, FluentD might be replaced with Logstash, uh, that's then the ELK stack. Uh, and uh, in this stack, the FluentD is used as the collector to collect the log records, uh, parse them and filter them, and then it forwards them to Elasticsearch, which is used to store and index the logs. And then uh, Kibana is used for uh, browsing through them, visualizing them, building dashboards, uh, and so on. And when these components communicate, then uh, they by default use usually HTTP or uh, HTTPS, of course, where you have the FluentD send the data with HTTP to the Elasticsearch, which then stores them and index them. And uh, then Kibana is again using HTTP protocol to request uh, these data and uh, show them. And uh, so in this talk, I want to focus on how Apache Kafka can improve uh, pipelines like these uh, and what value it can add. But before we deep dive into that, uh, let's first have a look at uh, what Apache Kafka itself is and what are its main features to uh, at least get some uh, quick introduction. So Apache Kafka is distributed event streaming platform, which uh, combines the delivery and uh, storage and processing of uh, the records or messages, if you want. And uh, it's designed for high performance, uh, high scalability. You can very easily scale it uh, horizontally. And it's also designed for availability and reliability, durability, fault tolerance, and all these things. And it has also a huge ecosystem of tools, client libraries, uh, connectors, uh, which uh, we can use to work with the data which we have in Kafka. 
And uh, the, there are several main features which Kafka can bring into the monitoring pipeline. One of them is that it's using uh, efficient uh, protocol based on TCP, which uh, can give you very good performance in delivering the data. But also, it doesn't really care about the messages it's getting. It's treating all the messages as a as a byte arrays, and it really just gets the bytes from the clients, from the producers, and just dumps them on the disk. Uh, and uh, later, when a consumer connects, it's either read from the disk or maybe it's still in the disk cache in the memory. But it doesn't do any parsing, and that uh, allows for uh, high throughput uh, of the messages, which is one of the features which is uh, useful for for collecting the monitoring data because it's usually quite a lot of messages, uh, usually fairly big amounts of uh, data, and Kafka doesn't have problems to handle these. The protocol also supports configurable reliability, so uh, you can kind of define how uh, much reliability you want to how many different uh, broker replicas should the data be written, uh, and how reliably should they be produced. Interesting enough, uh, from my experience, a lot of the users using Kafka for the monitoring data have very different requirements for this. Uh, some of them treat the monitoring data as in, uh, yeah, if I lose some log records, uh, who cares? Uh, while others are very strict about them and uh, need to keep all of them and need to have super high reliability. And uh, uh, yeah, that's uh, f f completely fine for Kafka because you can really configure it and uh, use it uh, as you want. Another nice thing about Kafka in your monitoring pipeline is that it decouples the different components. It can basically serve as a buffer between the FluentD, which uh, collects the logs, and the Elasticsearch, which is then storing and indexing them. Because uh, the FluentD really just connects to Kafka, it sends the logs there, and then doesn't really care what happens next. And then basically, asynchronously from that, uh, Kafka can take these data and deliver them to other systems like Elasticsearch, but FluentD doesn't care about it. So uh, if uh, the end system is, for example, unavailable because of some crash or some disaster situation, then the data will be stored in Kafka and they will be available later. Similarly, it can help with uh, some peak situations, which is uh, very important because uh, quite often when your system has some problems and some issues, uh, there's a lot of log messages floating around and you don't really want to lose them because uh, somewhere in the pipeline you overwhelm some uh, component. So again, Kafka can ingest huge amounts of uh, data and then later when the peak is over, it can then uh, basically deliver them to the other systems and basically uh, even out the peak situation. So. What we will really look into this talk and what I will show in the demo is something what uh, you can call a, a AFKK stack, uh, where we basically put Kafka into the middle of the AFK stack. And it will work very similarly. FluentD will collect the records and send them to Kafka. Kafka will store them and uh, it will use Kafka Connect, which is uh, Kafka's integration framework, integration component, together with uh, some connectors provided by the Apache Camel project, and forward the logs to Elasticsearch. And then, uh, as in the original stack, uh, Kibana can be used to connect to the Elasticsearch and uh, look through the logs. So uh, it will look something like this. We will have kind of one partition consisting of Kafka uh, and FluentD uh, sending the messages around and storing them in Kafka. And then the second partition will be getting the data out of Kafka and uh, pushing them into Elasticsearch or uh, into Kibana. Uh, or from Elasticsearch, they will be used from Kibana. So, yeah, this is how the whole pipeline looks like. And uh, to make things more interesting, we'll uh, 
in the demo run all of that on uh, Kubernetes because uh, yeah, that's today's kind of very popular platform. So using it in the demo uh, seemed quite obvious. So I already prepared some things uh, for the demo upfront. So uh, first of all, I have here my uh, Kubernetes cluster using the latest Kubernetes version and uh, running in AWS with several nodes. And uh, I also deployed some pods. So uh, first of all, I deployed the Streamzy cluster operator. Uh, and using this operator, I deployed already the Kafka cluster and the Kafka Connect cluster. To deploy the Kafka cluster, it's super easy. You just create with the operator, you just create the resource with the kind Kafka. And there you specify all the details, resources, number of nodes, uh, listeners. Uh, I enabled your authentication and authorization and Prometheus metrics. Uh, and all of these things uh, are defined there. And then you create it, the operator just use this as a blueprint and deploys the Kafka cluster. And I did the same for Kafka Connect as well. If you don't know Kafka Connect, that's Kafka's framework for integration between Kafka brokers and other systems. And to deploy the Connect, I first use the Kafka user resource to create a user, which will be used by the Connect uh, pods to authenticate uh, when connecting to Kafka. And then I just use the kind Kafka Connect to actually create the deployment. And uh, Kafka Connect is using uh, different uh, connectors to uh, connect to the different systems. I, for the demo, will use connectors from the Apache Camel project. And uh, I define them here in the YAML as well. Uh, uh, this one will be the one we will use for the Elasticsearch. And I have another one for Slack, for example, and another one for Amazon uh, S3 storage. And again, when I did kubectl apply on this, it uh, did all the work for me and deployed the Kafka Connect cluster, including these uh, connectors. So that's uh, really easy. Uh, what I also did is uh, I already deployed Elasticsearch and uh, Kibana. So that's running here in uh, my browser. Uh, and uh, yeah, it doesn't have any data yet, but uh, we will change that soon. So that's all the things which I prepared uh, up front. Uh, that was really just to save uh, some time uh, in the demo. Now, first thing to do before we start collecting the logs is uh, we will need to create a topic in the Kafka cluster where we will uh, be collecting the logs. And I do that using the operator, using uh, the Kafka topic resource. Uh, I will name the topic uh, fluent bit logs. And uh, I just do kubectl apply. And that does all the magic and creates a topic in Kafka for me. And uh, now what I can do next is I can actually deploy the fluent bit which I'm using here. Uh, uh, Fluentbit, it's kind of a more lightweight version of the FluentD. It's coming from the same project. Uh, and uh, it has all the features we need and it consumes less resources than FluentD. So that's why I'm using it. To deploy it, I first create the service account and some cluster roles and cluster role bindings. Then I again create the Kafka user because Fluent uh, bit will need to connect to Kafka and authenticate and authorize. And then uh, in this config map, I have all the configuration. Uh, so here in this input section, I basically tell Fluent bit uh, where to scrape uh, the logs. Then uh, I add some additional filter to add some additional information into the logs uh, from Kubernetes, such as names of the pods to which the logs belong, uh, and so on. And then finally, in this uh, output configuration, I actually configure the Kafka part of things. So uh, I configure here the uh, bootstrap service where it can connect to the Kafka cluster. I tell it which topic to use to send the logs to. 
and then there's some additional configuration like some uh, buffering and uh, important I enable the TLS encryption and the TLS authentication here and pass the certificates created by the Kafka user and then the fluent bit itself it's running as a as a daemon set uh, for those who don't know what it is uh, that's a kubernetes resource which creates a single pod on uh, each node of uh, your cluster so let's do kubectl apply dash f on this it will create all the resources and when i do now kubectl get what's watch we can see that there are already several fluent bits starting some of them are already ready uh, it should be seven of them because my cluster has seven nodes so let's check that one two three four five six seven so that seems to be running uh, it's the right count so that's great so now we will connect to Kafka and check if it's actually producing any logs. And uh, to do that, I again create uh, a console user, which I will use from the console and which will be allowed to read the, the messages from this topic. So again, apply the resource that creates the secret with the certificate. And because I will connect there from uh, my local laptop uh, I uh, have to extract the secrets from the yeah, the certificates from the secret and I will do a bit cheating and uh, copy paste these commands here because uh, yeah otherwise uh, I would make probably 10 different typos while typing them and now all we need is uh, to get the address of the cluster so kubectl get kafka yamo and that tells me that this is the address for the load balancer listener which I can use to connect and I will use uh, Kafka cat as the client I again to save some typos copy pasted the command Kafka cat is a simple command line utility for sending or receiving messages uh, to Kafka so uh, let's run it and let's see if we are getting some messages and you see that we are getting a bunch of JSONs Ray. So let's kill it and look at them. Uh, you can see that each of these is single message. Uh, it's always JSON. It has the timestamp of the log. Then it has the message that's important. So this one is complaining about something with low balancer configuration and things like that. So these are all the logs generated by the different pods and by the system and collected by the fluent bits uh, and uh, and yeah they are now getting to the topic uh, so uh, let's do something with them and uh, what we will do is uh, i will deploy this elastic search connector uh, into my connect cluster i tell it how to connect to the elastic search i tell it uh, uh, how should the index be called uh, i configure the converters to convert the values uh, it's already JSON, so I don't need to do any real conversion. And I specify the topics it should be using as the source. And now, uh, as many times before, I apply this. And that creates, uh, with the power of the Strumzy operator, the connector in the Kafka Connect cluster. So uh, I can now do kubectl get uh, KCTRO YAML and I can see that it's uh, the connector is running the tasks are still empty so they are probably still creating what I can do is I can switch to Kibana and uh, I can uh, dismiss the security message I can zoom the window a bit uh, and I can add data uh, actually I should already have the data there so let's go to home uh, let's go to index management and we should be able to create the index pattern already log star that works next we select the field with the timestamp which is the timestamp and create the index pattern 
and then uh, I can go to the discover part and I already see a bunch of my uh, blocks here from different components and what I can for example do I can check uh, I have here for example the pod name so uh, yeah I can for example get uh, logs only from one of these uh, pods or search the logs uh, or do whatever I want so uh, yeah that's uh, it's great because it means that we are now receiving the messages uh, into Elasticsearch and into Kibana and uh, all seems to be working fine. So this was the first demo where uh, we got the logs from Fluendi through Kafka into Elasticsearch uh, but uh, that's really just the beginning right because usually with the logs we need to do a lot more than that. Uh, you probably need to do some archiving. Uh, in some cases, depending on the industry you work on, there might be even legal obligations to store the logs for, I don't know, five years or how many. But uh, even without that, you maybe want to store the logs for some future analysis, future issues, uh, some ideas you would want to check later. Another thing uh, is... Uh, you would probably need some kind of alerting uh, to get some alerts when some problems are happening, when your users are getting uh, too many 404 errors or when someone tries to break into your system. And you probably want to do all kind of analytics or maybe even some machine learning or artificial intelligence processing to get some additional information from, uh, from the data. And... Uh, the good news is that Kafka can do it all uh, because Kafka is more than uh, just a PubSub messaging platform. It has uh, the Kafka Connect component, which has uh, many different connectors to integrate with all kinds of systems. It has also the Kafka Streams API, which uh, uh, can be used, which is basically stream processing API and can be used to process and analyze uh, the logs and uh, yeah, do things like windowing, aggregations, uh, join uh, metrics with logs to maybe find some correlations and uh, things like that. And there's then a huge amount of different third party integrations, uh, clients, stream processing tools, or uh, as I already mentioned, machine learning and AI tools, which you can also use to process the logs. So what we will really do is we will take it from uh, from this simple pipeline into something like this where we add some additional integration. So for example we will do some stream processing and uh, get uh, the alerts sent uh, to Slack so that we know about some problems or uh, we can take all the logs and metrics and monitoring data we might have in our Kafka cluster and uh, store it uh, in Amazon S3 or Amazon Glacier for uh, uh, for kind of archiving. And later, if we need these logs, we can then easily go there and uh, just recover the files from there after several years or however long we want to store them. The next thing we try to do is to get uh, data with the log messages into the Amazon S3 bucket, which I have already prepared. Uh, you can see when I refresh it that uh, it's completely empty now. And uh, to get the log messages which we are getting there, uh, I will uh, deploy another Kafka connector. And uh, this time it will be a S3 connector. Uh, using the uh, Camel AWS 2 S3 sync connector and again I specify the topic which I want to read it from. I specify the name pattern, how the files should be named and I specify this aggregation which is uh, important because I do not want to have in the S3 bucket million of messages individually there but instead I can tell the connector to uh, batch the messages into bigger files uh, 
each containing either thousand messages or uh, the file will be closed when we don't receive anything for five seconds. And because I'm uploading this into AWS, I have to specify the credentials, but uh, I do it securely. So I load it from the files, uh, load it from a secret instead of having them hard coded uh, here in the connector or configuration. So we can uh, apply it. When uh, it gets created, we can try to get kubectl get kctr sv connector dash o yaml. And we can see that it's running, the tasks are still creating. Uh, and uh, hopefully when we switch to the UI, we should soon see a new files here. And you can already see, I got a bunch of files here. And uh, the name is according to the pattern which we specified. So it starts with the date and timestamp. It's important when looking for the logs. The file has about uh, 680 kilobytes. Uh, it was just updated a minute ago. And if I would download it, you would really see all the JSON messages uh, being stored in uh, this single file. So uh, uh, yeah, that's how we can take care of the archiving. Uh, and uh, we do not need to configure anything in the Fluent bit. We already had the data in Kafka, so we just deployed another connector to do something else with it. And uh, the next thing uh, I will show you is a very simple example of, uh, of alerting. Uh, so uh, first I will create a new topic. Uh, and into this topic, I uh, will uh, send uh, the alert. And uh, next, I will create uh, a Slack connector, which will be reading messages from uh, from these uh, these uh, from this topic, from the logging alerts which we just created, and it will push them into Slack uh, into a channel called Yakub Alerts. Uh, and uh, yeah, I again have to provide it. Uh, the secret webhook URL, uh, which it is using to publish these messages. And uh, all I need to do is kubectl apply. That should create the connector. So that's now ready. And uh, so when I now send the message into this uh, logging alerts topic, it will be automatically forwarded into my Slack uh, channel where I can see it and take a look at it and maybe do something with it. But we need to now generate some, uh, some alerts first. And what I did for that is I created a very simple Kafka Streams API application, which uh, creates a new stream processing, which reads all the log records. It, uh, uh, in this case, checks that it's coming from one of the Kafka pods, and it checks whether the message in the log uh, uh, is uh, about unauthorized uh, operation in Kafka. And when that's the case, that means someone's trying to do something bad uh, in my Kafka cluster, then uh, it sends me this nice error found uh, Kafka authorization error in pod blah blah blah, and repeats the log message. And then takes these messages it generates and sends them into another topic, which uh, will be the one which we created and which the Slack connector is reading. So it's, uh, it's really simple. It's uh, not the most sophisticated app, but uh, that should be enough for the demo purposes. And uh, I now just deploy it uh, as uh, deployment running inside my Kubernetes cluster. So I create the Kafka user again with all the writes which are needed. And then I create the deployment, which is running this uh, alerting application, which I just showed. And uh, 
So kubectl apply, that should create the application. The application will get started. It will start reading all the different uh, logs from, uh, from uh, the Kafka cluster, which uh, Fluent bit, bit is publishing there. And uh, when it finds the right messages, it will generate uh, the, the alerts, send them into another topic where the connector picks them up. And uh, when I go to my Slack here, you can already see a bunch of new messages with some uh, some authorization errors. So uh, uh, it looks like uh, the fluent bit is trying to do something what's uh, what's not allowed. That was maybe on the beginning uh, in the first demo before the authorization propagated. Uh, but yeah, we can see that uh, this works. Let's mark them. As red, and uh, that way I know that uh, uh, there's something wrong in my cluster, and then I sh that I should uh, look into it. Uh, and uh, yeah, of course, uh, for production use, you can definitely improve this uh, alerting application and make it a bit more sophisticated. In the demos, uh, we mostly focused on logging, but uh, the same model can be really used beyond logging for other monitoring data as well. Uh, you can have the metrics or, for example, traces uh, be collected and delivered via Kafka in uh, yeah, using the same architecture. Uh, the components might differ, but the principles uh, will be exactly the same. And uh, the benefits you get from that uh, will be also similar to what uh, you get with logging. And as an example, the Jaeger tracing uh, project, which is a popular project for uh, for tracing of uh, events across your applications, uh, is another example of a system which supports Kafka directly out of the box. So you can have the Jaeger collector send data to Kafka, and you have the Kafka kind of as the uh, middleman decoupling uh, the collector from the from the ingesters uh, which ingest it and push it into the storage and from the query server which is used for querying the tracing data. So uh, that's another example of this pattern used for tracing. Uh, before the end of the talk, uh, we should probably also talk about when not to use Kafka in your, uh, in your monitoring pipeline. Uh, what is important to understand that uh, Kafka adds another step on the critical path for your monitoring data. So someone has to operate it and uh, understand it. All to the operators as streams it try to do most of the heavy lifting. You still probably should have a clue uh, about how it works if you want to rely on it with your monitoring data. And then uh, even through Kafka is designed as a reliable, fault-tolerant, uh, durable, and so on. Uh, there is, of course, always some probability that it will fail and uh, cause problem to your monitoring pipeline. Uh, and in addition, uh, Kafka is not always cheap to run. It uh, needs some resources. Uh, uh, so you either need to buy some additional hardware maybe or buy some more virtual resources in cloud. So you have to count with additional resources and uh, costs. And uh, that's why at the end you need to think uh, whether you have enough traffic and whether the monitoring is critical enough for you to make use of it. Because uh, if it's not, then uh, using Kafka would really cause more problems and worries than uh, would be the actual benefits of it. So uh, yeah, this is something what uh, you have to think about and decide based on your environment and your use cases. So that's it for my talk. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope it was interesting and uh, useful for you. The demos, uh, the files for the demos and the slides, they are available on this URL, which will redirect you to the very long name of my github repository so yeah if you are interested in trying this uh, on your own or going through the slides uh, feel free to have a look and uh, 
thanks for watching